Welcome to another edition of War Masters Workshop. Uh, today I'm going to be going over basic helmet uh, painting and weathering. Um, we're going to be using a, a Clone Wars Season 2 Death Watch helmet today because that's really all I have that's blank in the shop. Um, and you can tell this is a Death Watch helmet by the, uh, the very slim horizontal visor area and the much more elongated vertical area of the visor as well. Plus the cheeks are always a lot higher on the Clone Wars Death Watch helmets than the standard Boba helmet. Um, the flat ears, that kind of thing. So um, that's what this is. We're gonna we're just gonna be doing a basic paint job. I'm actually gonna make it look similar to a Django style paint job. I'm just going to instead of it being blue, it's gonna be like a, a dark red. Okay? So I'm gonna show you uh, how we tape out for doing such a paint job, uh, how we do our weathering, um, and and we're going to go from there. All right, here we have our helmet. It's taped out. Uh, it's ready to start adding the masking fluid for weathering, um, and we're going to start on that here shortly. But I just wanted to show you exactly how I tape out a helmet when I uh, tape it for for painting. So basically, you know, I, I'm I'm going to put tape on these areas. I usually do tape on the cheeks like this because you can't really use, um, it's hard to stretch a piece of, piece of paper across it and then have to cut that piece of paper out. It's better to just cover it with tape and then you can use an X-Acto knife and just run right over the edges. What I like to do is, I know you can't really see it here, but I'll take a pencil and I'll, after I get the tape on, I'll use a pencil and I'll shade in where that, where the apex of the corner is on this thing. And then, after I get that shaded in, I'll go right in the middle of the line as best as possible to get that, that tape out done and get all those nice curves so that it has that, it keeps that real nice curve when you go to paint it. Um, when you pull the tape off, you'll have a nice crisp edge there to work with. Um, I mean, unless you weather it or whatever, but at least the, the, you know, the paint will have a crisp edge so it, it looks a lot more industrial that way. At the top here, I just use a piece and one one half of a, a sheet of newspaper, uh, basically right, right here. I just I just take one half of a sheet of newspaper and just wrap it around the top. I'll put one line of tape is right here is on the helmet, and then I'll take a piece of tape. I'll run it along the edge, going all the way down, with half of it being on the paper and the other half being off, and then I'll just wrap it right around, and then I'll just fold the top down. And that makes a nice one piece, um, a one piece tape out job here to, to block that tape or to block the paint. And then at the bottom or at the back here, it's pretty simple. It's just tape stretched all the way across, cut it so it's nice and crisp, and you get those crisp angles here. You know, you don't want the paint going over onto the areas that you don't want the paint at. So we want to keep. This area, you know, the, the brow and the ridge and here in the back and the ears and the ear bases and the T area and the visor are all going to be colored. The rest is just going to stay silver. So it's, it's almost going to be like a Django Fett color helmet where it's just one color over the top of the metallic, okay? So it's pretty, pretty simple. And pretty simple you can see how, how it's uh, taped out here. All right. Next, we'll start working on weathering. All right, we're going to uh, work on masking for our weathering, and um, I'm not going to do the whole helmet, but I'm going to do. I'm going to show you um, some of the key places that you want to hit with your masking fluid or whatever you use for masking. You can use toothpaste. You can use masking fluid. Um, I make my own masking fluid these days, which is just basically watered down Halloween latex, and I put it on a a long stem. Uh, Q-tip or earbud as some people call them, cotton bud, whatever. And what I do is I, I go along these outer angles with it here. I mean, right here along these edges, I put a little bit right in here because this is where the helmet is most likely to get scratched up is on these outer edges. So I'll go, some of them I'll make long like this because, you know, a lot of that's going to get knocked off, battle damage. I do the same thing along the ear. Now when you say how do you make your own masking fluid, um, if you have a Halloween store nearby or whatever, uh, any place that you can get um, 
latex for, for prosthetics. It's basically that and then water it down with some cold water till it looks like milk. And you don't want to put too much weathering that. In fact, that you know, maybe that's a little much. Maybe we want to just put some right there and, and kind of leave a gap here. You want to give it the impression, and it's okay to come out, you know, come out and down a little bit here into the actual piece. You want to give the impression of battle, but you don't want to overdo it. Too much weathering, in my opinion, is just as bad as not enough. I always do the full edge here on the earpieces because those get scraped. Those, those are going to get banged on things. I'll do a little bit on the bottom and then a little bit on the back. Just some happy little weathering. Maybe I'll coat the back of the, the ear plate here. Just a little bit and then we'll get some more latex on there and we'll go around. We'll hit this right through here. And let's not forget our brow. Brow's gonna have some too. A lot of people ask, why do you weather? Well, you know, you don't have to weather. That's a personal preference. My personal opinion on weathering, though, is that a helmet or any armor piece always looks better when it has depth. And the best way to give an armor piece depth is by giving it some good weathering. Now you can come up here against the tape as well and put a little bit in on the inside because, yeah, that's going to get... That's going to get whacked up on too because it's right in the front. I mean, you know, blaster bolts are going to hit that. We'll glance off. If you're a good man, though, they won't hit it. <laughs> it could be just shrapnel. But you just want to hit it lightly. Right around here, of course, because the visor area always is the most frontal part of the helmet. So you definitely want to get some good weathering going on there. And then a little bit right through here. I always like to nick the the corner of the of the horizontal and vertical T there because uh, or visor because it's a uh, it just looks like a good place that would get smacked around a bit and we're just hitting this very very light very light what this latex does is as it dries going to create a, a very light film that's actually very easy to rub off after the paint's been applied. And we just keep going down as far as you want. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. But now on this one, I'm going to make this a little bit thicker. So maybe he got whacked real hard there. If you're in a, a firefight or what have you. I try not to repeat too much of the weathering on one side as I have on the other. I try to keep the patterns a little bit more random if possible. I mean we are doing edges so you can pick and choose. Maybe this side got a little bit more hit, you know, hit up a little bit more on this high part than the other side. The other side is more on the indentioned area less up on this area so you know try to uh 
try to change it up a little bit. You know, you can do large weathering, like I just connected this. Now that's that's some large weathering right there. It's a good good strand of weathering. So we're gonna go in. Coat that one more time. And then here's the ears again. On this one, we're going to hit that whole side right there. Just down to about there. We're also going to weather the center on this side, which is pretty easy. We just draw it. Oh, you can't really see it. We just go right here along this line and we just draw it right down the center. The latex will do the work for us. And then, like I said before, I like I always like to weather these the bottoms of the ear caps. The outcropping there just it just doesn't make sense for that to not be weathered. It's the furthest um horizontal area from the center of the helmet so it's it's going to take some smacks in any fight so we'll hit the brow here again a little bit and it's okay if you come down see this one's a little bit far down that's okay I would say check to make sure you don't come down too much. But uh, it's okay if you come down a little bit. That that just brings your weathering down a bit further. <clears throat> and the way the latex comes off, it always, in my opinion, gives it sort of a crackle look. And we just keep going around with it till we get to our desired area which I believe we're at All right, let's do back I tend not to weather the back too much because it is the back maybe we'll weather this area back here a little bit of course we do have to hit the back of the your cap here. We'll hit it right here. The brow always gets some weathering when I'm doing weathering because it is the uh, it's the one piece that sticks out the furthest with the most surface area. This little brow ridge. Some people just call it the ridge. It's and some people call it the brow when it's up front. But it, I mean, it's it's basically the same piece. Like touching where I've weathered it because you will you'll scrape some of that masking fluid off and you may not necessarily want to do that these long stem uh, these long stem cotton buds are hard to come by um, but you can buy them I mean you can buy them I don't think you can get them in a store you might be able to get them in a craft store
and I just I basically hold it like a pencil and just draw with the masking fluid, just draw all the way around it. Mask this side a little bit further in on and up here. Now it does take the homemade masking fluid a little bit longer to dry because um, I use a little bit more water in it than what you would get from a masking fluid from a store, but considering how expensive masking fluid is and you can see right here it's already started to dry and it basically looks the same as any other latex masking fluid um, I just took three scoops out of this gallon bucket I've got of latex put it in here and just filled it up with water until like I said it got that milk kinda like you know skim milk maybe a little bit thicker than skim not not quite a heavy cream or anything when it got a good like milk consistency that's when it was perfect and I tested it just to make sure it was going to do everything I needed it to do. But there we have our masked out helmet. She's ready to start painting. And actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit more. I mean, why not go a little bit, a little bit crazy here? Let's bring this in, and we're going to really come in there. Here we go. The difference between this masking fluid and store-bought masking fluid is that it's kind of difficult to see where this masking fluid is actually at on the helmet. It dries and it's clear. I mean, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a turn it a bit. I think you probably can. There's you can see a line there, lines right through there and up here and here. I'm gonna put a little more right there. I think I had some there actually. So I say it is kind of difficult to to see, but that's okay. Go down a little low on this one too. If you accidentally pull a little bit of masking fluid off, that's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. Just replace it. I mean, it's such a easy product or easy thing to work with. Um, it's it's very easy to deal with. Some people say, "Well, is there such a thing as too much weathering?" Well, yeah, there is. You can have too much weathering. It's totally possible. All right, I think we've masked this one out enough. And we're gonna let this dry. Then we come back. We're gonna paint it. Or we're gonna—I'm sorry. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, lay down our our paint, and we come back, and uh, we'll let that dry, and then we'll pull our our masking fluid off, and uh, then we'll see how it looks before we start doing the uh, topical weathering. All right, so uh, we're back. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start painting our helmet. Now that we've got it all taped out and uh, masked out for weathering, um, I'm using a, uh, a Rust-Oleum paint. Which, it's Colonial Red. It's, it's got a it's got to match a, uh, a jet pack that's already painted with a very similar red. So, we'll go ahead and shake our paint up. Now, if you have uh, if you've watched the previous uh, Warmaster Workshop episode four, you'll see how we painted. A piece of uh, a piece of armor, a chest plate, and we're basically going to use uh, many of the same methods on the helmet. Um, we're just going to go back and forth, you know, try to keep the uh, the coats fairly light. Uh, we'll do multiple passings, and 
and you can see how this goes. It's it's not difficult. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry too much on showing you the the basics of the painting because that's covered in a in the previous video. So. And the key here is to not get too crazy with the paint. You can go over it several times, it's not going to hurt anything. Another thing you want to be somewhat mindful about is keeping the top coat layer um, the same brand as the metallic layer. Um, it's the same brand of paint because if you don't, what can happen is you get uh, you'll get scaling and orange peel because some of the curing agents in the uh, metallic paint often don't like to work with other brands. So whatever brand you start out with is the brand you need to stay with. Otherwise, you could be sanding and doing the whole thing over again, which would not be fun. And the good thing about spray paint is that it dries fairly quickly. And if you do like what I just did, and, and you tear your uh, a masked off area, just take a little piece of mask or piece of tape and go back over it. And you can see I'm just doing real small bursts of paint and sweeps. And that is so I don't get too much paint in one area. You don't want to you don't want to put too much paint in an area or it'll lead to sagging and just pooling. It just will not look good. You want to try to get all the silver areas coated with paint. Your weathering is going to take care of the areas that aren't. Now, on this specific bucket, since it's not going to be worn, I'm not too worried about taping off the tea area there and, and spraying. If a little paint gets inside of it, nobody's ever going to see it or have to deal with it. But normally you'd want to tape the inside of the tea visor out so the paint doesn't go into the helmet. Turn this.
keeping a good distance from the helmet means you're less likely to, to get that paint build up. So at this point we're going to go ahead and let it dry and then we'll come back to it and we'll see if it, uh, we'll see what we need to do um, as far as adding more paint and that kind of thing. So, all right, as you can see, we've uh, went ahead and unwrapped the helmet. We took all the masking off, or all the uh, all the tape, all the paper off the off the dome and everything. And here's our completed paint job. That's that's the red. As you can see, some of the uh, some of the masking fluid has already come off with the tape, which is not a big problem because we're getting ready to take a lot of that take all that off anyway. But uh, <clears throat> here's the uh, here's the finished product thus far, and as you can see, all the uh, tape lines are fairly nice and tight, which is exactly what you want. You want it to try to be as even as possible on those uh, on those curves. So, all right, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and remove the weathering. Um, probably not going to remove it all in this uh, but we're going to start moving some just so you can see how it's done now I normally just use my thumb because that's the easiest thing to use um, and you can see I don't, I don't know if you can see it in the camera here but uh, if you hold it up to the light you can actually see the raised areas where the uh, masking fluid is so we're just going to take once we find those little areas I know you can take your thumb and go over it you just got to be careful you don't uh, dig into the actual paint. Right there, and we just scuff it over. And as you can see, the weathering it just it just starts rubbing right off. Now you'll know when your weathering is. Uh, you'll know the difference between weathering and an actual paint because as you scrub this, and I just I'm, I'm using a little exacto just to get the a little bit here on top, but uh, the weathering comes off fairly easy once it starts. It just rolls right up. Just like that. It'll just roll right off. Pretty simple. All those places where we put that latex fluid or whatever you used for masking. It just comes right off. Pretty as you please. Now, if you miss taking off some of the latex, it's okay. It doesn't hurt anything if it stays on there because what's going to happen is over time, it will it will come off just from just from normal use. And uh, what that does is that actually adds a whole other dynamic to your weathering. It's like new weathering from from wear and tear, which is kind of neat. I like to call that uh, active weathering. So it's not imperative that you remove all of the masking fluid because nobody's going to see it anyway. It's it's such a small um, it's so thin. It's such a small layer. It just blends right into the paint. You just kind of have to remember where it's at, or like I said, hold it up to a specific angle in the light, and you'll see it. All right, what we're doing now is we're putting, um, we're doing some topical weathering uh, to the helmet. Um, we've got, we've done all of our, we've pulled all of our masking fluid or masking solution off of the helmet, and we've gotten all this nice paint weathering here. So what we're doing now is we're applying some topical weathering, and I'm going to hold this up close to the camera so you can see, but so you can. See how there's dirt, how we're kind of griming it up. And what we're using 
basically is just some acrylic paint. Um, I've mixed up three different colors of acrylic paint to get this kind of olive drab mixture. Kind of, I mean, you can use whatever colors you want. Um, I kind of like it. If it's just going to be metal, I kind of like to use something dark so that it shows up really well on the metal, um, on the metallic color. But uh, I've already started some, so I'm just going to show you how we do this. Uh, basically, you just use a paper towel, just a just a paper towel. I've just folded up a paper towel here, and um, you know you, you take a corner of it and you, you dip a little bit of it. You know, you dip, get a little bit of paint on it here, okay? And you're going to rub across. What I do is I I rub across where we've done our our weathering. And you want to thin the paint out with a little bit of water so that it gets kind of a watery consistency. You don't want it to dry on here, you know, too quickly. You just basically want want it to fill in and kind of get caught in these little all these little tiny crevices and, and areas, kind of like in corners and such. And then we're going to wipe it out of there so that it doesn't doesn't dry. And I like to do the edges too as I'm doing this so that it you know you get dirt, kind of that dirt and grime look around the edge of the helmet. Sort of like that right there. And as you can see, it's already kind of starting to to dry up here. So when well, when it's drying, just take another end of the of the towel. I've kind of got it a little bit damp here, and just sort of wipe or dab either one like that. I tend to want to wipe it when it's on the metal because I don't want it to be too, and that'll really spread it out. I don't want it to get too concentrated, but I don't want it to be too light. I want it to look like like dirt. So I'm just gonna really keep dabbing this off here. And if it looks like you take a little bit too much off, which I think I did there, just kind of dab it again. It's not gonna hurt anything. And just try to just kind of work it in. Dab it real good in through here. this up so you can see so you've got some real nice dirty look and it's it's really muted out uh, the shine of the metal so that it's more dingy I mean it's got that dirt look this is just the first type of weathering we're going to do topical weathering and this is you know this acrylic paint it, it's not uh, it doesn't dry super fast as long as you keep it watered down I mean that's the key you really got to keep it watered down if you don't, um, it will dry quicker. So, and you can uh, you can add water to it as it starts to dry. Um, you know, when it's when it's over here, you can you can actually add more water to that. So, one thing I try to do is, if there's extra up here, I I'll, I'll, I. Uh, I go up instead of across, and I might go across a little bit with it at first, but I try to go up instead of across. It's easier to work in when you go up up with it, up and down. Alright, and this is dried. This is dried well enough, so we'll just dab a little bit and dab it away. And you don't want to take it all off, you just want to make sure you leave enough on there to really have that dirt look. And it's it's really key that you make your paint something that looks kind of like 
muck muck and dirt because if you don't it's not going to be super believable as dirt and we're going to go down the center of the ear here and you don't just have to do the uh, the metal parts. I mean, as you can see, I've tried to, to work it in to all the colors around the helmet, to all the red. You know, you don't want it to overpower. You just you want it to look like you know dirt that would normally that would normally appear there after usage. So we just keep going around with it here. Just little dabs. That's all it takes. Little dabs. And again, if you get if you get it on there on the, the metal like I did there, just just some wipes. Just like that. And we'll keep going around this bottom edge. On all these edges, all these. We'll just go in this. We'll go crazy right here. Go a little crazy. It's not going to hurt anything. You're going to wipe most of it out anyway. And then again, we just dab it off, work it in. Now, you don't have to do this type of weathering if you don't want. If you're scared, you might screw up your paint. The good thing is acrylic paint's really good about uh, coming off of water as long as it's not completely dry, so let me just work it around real good in here. It gets in all those little cracks and crevices. You don't want it to pull up, but you want it to look like dirt. And that's the key, is for it to look like, like dirt. Edges and corners are always going to be where dirt, um, you know, collects. I mean, that's... Pretty much the way it works in the real world. So, if we're uh, weathering this thing to make it look used, you want to use that. You want to use the real world as your as your pattern for uh, as your reference for dirt. So, we'll go back along this edge here a little bit more. never really 
did this kind of weathering until I actually saw it done by somebody a lot in person at a convention that I was at. And uh, it looked so good. I mean, it looked really cool. And it was actually done after a kit would, had already been painted. It had already been worn several times. I mean, you can actually do this at any point um, in the lifespan of your kit. I think I rubbed a little bit too much off there. Um, add a little bit more here. But yeah, you can add this after the fact. You don't even have to uh, wait, or you don't even have to do this at the very beginning. You can always put this type of weathering um, on the kit after it's painted, and just you know, kind of switch up the whole, kind of switches up the whole look of your character. here just so I can rub it in good and not have all right now there we have our first type of well our first type of topical weathering Okay, and I don't know how easy it is to see on here. Let me hold it up a bit. That's our mud. That's our, our, our real mucky dirt weathering. And I'm noticing that's one thing you can always notice where you might need a little bit more. That's our dirt, which is why it would be topical, because it's dirt. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is our final type of weathering, at least the final type I like to use, which if you watched uh, episode four of War Masters Workshop, you saw me do this, use this type of weathering on the chest plate. But this is, uh, it's basically artist chalk and a sandpaper, and a piece of sandpaper. I don't know what, let's see, I don't know what grit this is. It's 150 grit. It can be whatever grit. I mean, it doesn't have to be, it just needs to be coarse or mildly coarse. And um, what I do is I take a, a jar lid. This is like an old mayonnaise jar lid. And uh, I strike the chalk on the, the paper, sandpaper and it, it makes it a dust, okay? And uh, this, is just, this is just the end of a one inch, this is just a one inch brush. Um, what I do is I dip that into the chalk. I get I really work it into the brushes, into the bristles of the brush there, and uh, bring the helmet closer to me here, and I'll, I'll just scrub, kind of kind of hard. I mean, you wanna you wanna really scrub it good. You wanna make sure that you get you know, get some chalk. You know, sprinkle a little bit on there. It won't hurt anything. And then just scrub real good. What the chalk does, you don't really want to, you want to try to keep from touching it for now as much as possible. I don't know if you see it. You may be able to see it on the light, but the chalk, it has a nice sort of dusty texture as well. And it even gets trapped in these little, you know, little pockets or whatnot. Just sprinkle a little bit on there. The harder you push, the more you, you force it into the paint. And you really want to try to get it in that paint as much as possible. And you are going to have to touch it a little bit.
this always works exceptionally exceptionally well on lighter colors or just straight up metallics. I don't know if you can see it, but it's added a nice a nice dust element, sort of a scoring. to the helmet and we're literally going to do that to the entire thing go around these edges real good because anywhere you might not have gotten paint you want to try to mute that out as best as possible with the dust really scrub. I mean, that's kind of key to the dust doing its job, is that you just got to scrub it in. And you can use a bigger brush than a one-inch brush. It's just, it's kind of been my carbon scoring kit since, you know, forever. So that's just what I use. And I really feel like you see carbon scoring best after you put your matte finish on. And we're going to put it on the cheeks, of course. So you can kind of see it a little bit, a little bit better there on the cheek. I want to make sure you get it on the, the red because you can definitely see when it goes on the red because the shine goes away. You get this nice um real nice muted look. You can see it real good on the cheek there. Really scrub it under those corners. The other cool thing about the dust too is that it settles on the, the paint or on the paint for the weathering so it helps add to the grime effect I don't know if you can see that but it really helps add to that grimy look don't forget your brow Cool thing is you can just shake that stuff right off. Get a little too much. Just shake it off real quick before you start scrubbing it in. Carbon scoring, it's, I mean, it's almost a highlight, really, to highlight the weathering that you've already done. It settles in just like... just 
like the topical weathering did. You can see I'm not I'm not really going this way very often. I mean sometimes, but it's pretty rare. I'm I'm usually going up and down. That just spreads it out in a much uh, what I feel is a much more uh, realistic sort of pattern. That's pretty much it. That's there's our helmet with topical weathering there and the carbon dusting. Really gives it a nice worn look and also mutes the red down quite a bit. Really gives it almost a almost a darker look it's already a fairly dark red but of course you can always go over it a little bit and add some more if you want to I like to keep that I like to keep the carbon scoring somewhat high on the stuff that I paint because you know that's that's what's left over that's the blaster you know, blaster fire whatever blowback from blaster bolts all that happy stuff so all right, next we're going to be on our last step, which is adding matte to this, adding a matte finish to seal it up. And um, then we'll, we'll, we'll start uh, worrying about the T-visor, getting that installed, right? For this last part of our helmet, um, before we move to the T-visor, we're going to go ahead and seal up all of our weathering, um, all of our topical weathering with a matte, uh, a matte finish. I just use a, a clear uh, matte enamel, and it's uh, pretty tough stuff. And you put it on there and it'll it'll keep it nice and sealed up. So. And the biggest reasons for, for putting the mat on are of course you don't want the, the carbon dusting that we did of the chalk to come off because it will come off if it gets wet. If you're you know if you have sweaty hands touching it, whatever, um, just the oil from your own hands will pull it off. Uh, we also want to use a mat to subdue the uh, you know, any more of the maybe the bright metallics that are still on there, which really it's not very bright now, but uh, the mat will ensure that that's, that that's not the case. So. And just like any other paint, you'll paint this the same way. Um, just, you know, go over it. If you watched uh, episode four of War Masters Workshop, you'll see how I did that piece with that with matte finish. The great thing about matte finish is it dries fairly quickly. You do want to make sure you get it in, in all of this on all the surface area. Make sure you get it in all the little cracks and crevices, you know, aim it up so you can get underneath the brow there and
I always say you can never have enough uh, matte finish on something like this. And it does dry really quick. I mean, that's that's already dried. And there, there we've got it. I mean, that's it. That's our that's our painted and fully painted and weathered helmet. Ready for the T visor. And um, we're going to go ahead and install our T visor. Um, it's pretty pretty easy to do. Most helmets, if uh, you can see inside right here, most helmets kind of have a, a spot that's created in the mold of the helmet when they're casting it for a, uh, a T visor already to sit in there. So it's just a matter of just putting the T visor in and then um, putting some adhesive in there. So we're going to, uh, that's basically what we're going to do. And we're going to keep it simple. Um, I kind of, there's, there, I kind of have several different ways to attach a T visor. We're going to go and just use the most simple way, which is uh, just, just simple high temperature hot glue which, as you can see the gun, there we are. We're just going to use a high temp heat gun here. And, and what I'm going to do is just take some sandpaper, and it can be whatever, I mean, you want it, you know, you want it to have decent grit. So something that's either medium or uh, medium grit, like 150 or even lower than that. And you just want to kind of rough up a little bit right in through the T area on the inside. Because we're going to need to have this hot glue adhere to the, the helmet to hold the T-visor in. There is a trick to this, too. A lot of people think you can just dump a bunch of hot glue in the helmet, plop the T-visor in, and you're good to go. But A lot of times that'll cause um, hot glue to get on your T visor on the outside or come through the cracks and that kind of thing. You also want to make sure you get this pattern up here. Make sure you uh, sand right up in here where the edge of the visor is going to sit. Helmet here, where you guys can see what I'm doing. And right up there, you want to sand right up in these edges, right here along the along the T inside of the T itself. Now, my personal helmet, I use plumber's epoxy, and just made some uh, like little catchways that I can. Uh, take the visor out if I need to, but uh, I've never had to. <laughs> Hopefully, never will. But I've also used hot glue for other people's helmets. All right, so our helmet's about as prepped as we can make it. Here's our T visor. Now, there are different styles of T visor. You want to make sure that you get. Um, if you do get a pre-cut T-visor like this, uh, you want to make sure you get it at the right style. This one was actually a bit long, so I had to cut it off here at the bottom, which is was fine. It works fine. That's you just use a Dremel, a Dremel cutting wheel turned all the way up on speed, um, and then sand it a little bit down here. But they make several different versions of these. I get my T-visors at T-visor.com, or it's it's T uh, hyphen visor.com. He sells a ton of these things. Um, they're all laser cut. They're fairly thick acrylic. You know, I've had some people say, well, I don't think they're very durable. Well, I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years, and I've only ever had one tvisor.com visor break, and that was on an airline flight back from California, and it was my wife's helmet because it hadn't been packed 
well enough. It was rolling around the bin and it, it got cracked. So these are pretty pretty stout in my opinion. And if you need to, to you know, they're they're very rigid. But if you do need to either add a little curl or, or take some out, you can uh, just turn it over and use a heat gun to pull some of that, you know, to, to spread it open a little bit. This one fits perfect. So uh, you can also use a number eight welding shield. Um, they come in green or black. The black seems to be harder to get. I'm not a big fan of, of just having green, um, having a green visor, but it's all up to you. You know, it's personal preference. They're, they're also much cheaper. I think they're like maybe, if you can get one off the shelf, you may be able to get it cheaper than $8, and you can literally cut it with scissors. Um, the other thing I like about the acrylic ones here is that they do add a little bit of strength to the overall helmet. So we're going to go ahead and put this sucker in. It's pretty simple. Uh, you just, once you've got everything, you know, your, your T-Visor uh, shaped and, 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 and all that, you just literally you just pop it pop it right in it's it's not difficult right there now we'll just turn it around now just to show you a, just a preliminary of how it looks before we actually glue it in it'll basically have it'll basically look just like that and then we'll just you know, we'll attach it in with the hot glue and then we're done. So what I do is I grip the T area right here. I just put my hands right right on the T area there and I kind of squeeze it together so that it's nice and tight. Because I like my T's to be, and I like my visors to be fairly tight together. And while we're holding it here, we just take, this is going to be a little bit difficult to see, but I'll show you when it's done here. We just, we just roll this hot glue out right along the edge. And you want to make sure you don't get it into the visible portion if you can help it. If you do, it's not a huge deal. You can just trim it out with a razor blade. I think I might have gotten a little bit in there, but it's it'll be easy to pull out. Same thing again. You go on this side. And high temperature. You want to make sure you're using high temperature hot glue, because if you're not, I'll tell you right now, your visor will not stay in. High temperature hot glue it gets pretty darn hot. You need that. Um, you need the durability of, of high temp. Now you're going to see. I'm going to show you right here without moving the helmet too much or releasing my grip. You can see how I went along the edges there. That's just the bottom. Now we're just going to hold it here for a little while. And we're going to make sure that it um, that it does cool down. If you need to add a little bit more, that's fine. Now is the time to do it. And it will take a little while for the hot glue to, to uh, properly cool down. You can blow on it, that'll help. Blow some air across it. Also something you can do, <clears throat> you can uh, you can tie some string around the helmet, pull it real tight. Um, that will 
hold the helmet together while the visors, uh, while the hot glue is drying, and uh, it won't pop apart that way. Now the next part, we're going to put some glue in. I'm going to move this up so you guys can see it. Hopefully I can keep the light here. Alright, right over this, the hump of the cheek, right in this area here, we're going to put some glue as well. We're going to put a patch there and in the same place on this side to help hold it in as well. The visor gets fairly close to the helmet at that point, which makes it a very good area to lay down some hot glue. And again, you don't want to you want to try to keep these try to keep these these big patches of glue smooth. You don't want them um, globbed on. You want them nice and smooth. The smoother they are, the better job they're going to do. Let's see if I can. Yeah, see, you can see right there's one. And then you can kind of see the other one right there. But yeah, you just want to keep it nice and smooth. The hardest parts are always these tabs on either side, because they'll raise up, and you've kind of you're gonna have to build. We'll have to build a little. Uh, like a little patch of, of hot glue. All right, after that, after these have gotten started hardening up so they're not runny. We're going to go ahead and start adding to this side. And What we want to do is we're putting the hot glue so that it kind of runs a little bit underneath the visor and fills in that open gap and then we add some to the top here. Not too much, just enough so that it creates a little So that it just kind of creates a small, um, just like a small, I guess you can call it a bed of glue. Make sure you have plenty of extra glue sticks. You're gonna need if you got long glue sticks like this, you'll just need maybe you might be able to get away with one. I'm just a big fan of hanging on to extras. This is the part where you can kind of never have enough hot glue on these tabs on the sides. And we're going to let that just sit there and dry for a little bit. Let it cool down and harden up. Otherwise it's going to run. This is quite a big lump of uh, big lump of hot glue there. So, all right. And you can usually look at the hot glue and tell when it starts to get when it starts to get cloudy, because it comes out nice and clear when it's hot. When it starts to get cloudy, that means it's um, that means it's it's drying. We're gonna do the same over here. We're gonna create a small kind of a glue pad underneath. And then we're gonna add our glue on the top here. I'll hold that up so you can see how I right there. 
see how it's just kind of like a little nice little patch of glue. That's all you need. That's all you need. So now we let this dry for a little while, okay? And you're going to let it dry until the glue is completely cooled down before you're, before you're going to try to do anything with it, okay? Like installing padding or anything like that. Normally I wouldn't have padding in a, in a helmet like this, but it already had the padding in it, and I didn't feel like taking it out. So, now once everything is dry, you can go back through and see if you've got any spots where the uh, the hot glue may be visible. Best way to check that is to just look look in the front. I mean, if there's you got to get a little light in there, and there is a small patch just right here. On the inside, there's a little patch where you can see the hot glue, which that's that's pretty easy to trim. All I do is I just let me grab my X-Acto knife. Right here is this little patch we're talking about. Right here. Point out where this is probably easier to see. Right here. So all we do is we just take and we make a little mark. You want to be real gentle. And we just lightly go through it here. That's pretty much it. I mean, that, and that's it. That's our T visor. T visor is successfully installed. It's nice and and even and level. Put the camera back here so you can get a better look at it at the whole helmet. This is our fully weathered. T-Visor installed uh, Season 2 Death Watch Helmet from Clone Wars. Not a very, uh, not very complicated to pull off. And uh, it'll last a person for a, a long time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this episode of War Masters Workshop, and uh, look forward to seeing you here again.